Hello everyone, welcome back to Full Grown Gaming's Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts. Now I went ahead and gave everybody some more items, because I think in the cloud fight, I pretty much used all my items, and it was kind of out of necessity. But I did have some stocked up, I didn't even have to go buy anything. But I gave everybody, everybody items, because we're going to be going into a boss fight pretty much right out of the gate here. Kid, you're not entering the arena, are you? This ain't just some match, this is for real. I'm not afraid. You can decide if I'm hero material or not. Careful, kid. Well, Phil, thank you very much. I think we've got, you know, somewhat more of a stronger relationship with Phil now. Kid, I got two words of advice for you. Attack! You know, I don't know what to think about Hercules running away like that, but speaking of running away, we kind of have to do that right off the bat, because he uses this fireball attack. You can actually use the guard ability like that to reflect it back at Cerberus here, but the thing is, like, he uses attacks, like, there's one where he'll actually almost, like, throw up on the ground. It's kind of disgusting, honestly, but it makes these dark crystal things come out of the ground. This boss is overall very annoying. He's not that hard. But the thing is, like, the attacks he do does use, if you don't know how to dodge him, you're probably going to be, you know, in pain here. But the thing is, Hercules, why would he run away? Why would Hercules not help? He could have dumped Cloud off in that little lobby area and came back to help. And Hercules, Hercules is like one of the strong- did I really just not die there? And thank you, Goofy, for healing me. But Hercules is one of the- is apparently one of the strongest beings in the Kingdom Hearts universe seeing how quickly, you know, he's been taking care of all of these enemies and stuff like that. So I'm not sure why he's running away, maybe he wants us to test our abilities on our own. And I think he actually does make a reference to that later. But you would think maybe he wouldn't want Sora to die, because I'm fighting a devil demon dog with three heads here. He could have helped. Now, I was gonna say Marv, why would I s Marv, I don't know, Phil gave us a little bit more helpful information with those two words of advice. So I'm starting to like Phil a little bit, and by the way, here's another attack of his where he actually, you know, rears up on his hind legs like that. It's really not that hard to dodge, you just have to jump, and that is that throwing up attack I was talking about. I can't believe that they have this character from a Disney game throwing up onto the ground like that, and it's also not just, you know, childhood scarring, it's also, you know, an annoying attack, because like I said, those crystals come out of the ground, and when they're doing that, Obviously, if they hit you, they're going to interrupt whatever attack you're doing, and he'll just keep using it. So I'm not sure if you actually have to attack him to keep him from using that attack or not. But the thing is, it does get very, very annoying when he just keeps using it over and over. Now, one thing, I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but one thing that I think is pretty useful or a pretty good strategy is to attack from the side. And just when you attack, by the way, you do get more magic, usually. And by, I wish we had MP Rage or MP Haste or something like that, which would actually... Oh my goodness, I'm getting so close to dying in this fight here. But yeah, MP Rage and MP Haste make your magic meter go up. I wish we had those, and I think we would if we had picked the staff at the beginning of the game. But yeah, this strategy, attacking from the side like that, is actually pretty... A pretty good strategy I think because he only really lunges right in front of him so if you hit him are you kidding me Cerberus you're gonna use that attack again but the thing is if you attack from the side he's not really gonna be able to hit you all that easily because he's gonna be lunging straight forward so if you attack from the side you're probably going to be you might get hit once or twice but it's kind of hard to lose this fight especially if you have dodge roll and I'm not sure I don't remember when we learned a dodge roll Cerberus Alright, maybe we can, uh, you know, can prevent him from using that attack again. But I'm not sure when we learned dodge roll. I don't know if we learned that by leveling up, if we learned it from a character. I can't, or beating a boss fight, I actually can't remember. But picking the shield at the beginning of the game has actually turned into a pretty good investment, I think. Because we got scanned very early. I don't think you learned scan until, like, whatever level. Whoa! That was a pretty cool ride right there. I don't think we learned scan until quite later in the levels if we pick the sword so picking the shield has actually turned into a pretty good investment like i said because not only do we get those defensive abilities we also didn't really lose that much attack capability and i don't think our magic capabilities really went down at all and our ap by the way i mentioned ap a couple episodes back and i kind of explained that a little bit i don't think picking the shield really lowers your ap that much either so picking the shield i think is probably one of the most you know, strategic things you could do. 
All right, so he quit. I'm, I just sped that up because I was getting tired of dodging it and just, you know, blathering on about. Oh my goodness! How am I not dying? Usually that only happens like you go down to one HP if you have an ability. I forgot what it's called, like last chance or second chance or something like that, where you can't take more than like a fatal amount of H or damage. You'll always have one HP left. But maybe I'm just getting lucky. I'm not sure. But hopefully this last combo here will be the last thing. Actually, you know what would probably be a good idea is actually to use the ether on myself, replenish my magic, and then just use a whole bunch of, you know, lightning strikes on him. There we go. And I just learned Lucky Strike, which is a pretty cool thing for getting, you know, synthesis items later on. Thus, I do hereby dub thee Junior Heroes and confer upon thee full rights and privileges to participate in the games. Further... Hi, what do you mean, Junior Heroes? You rookies still don't understand what it takes to be a true hero. So, what does it take? Well, that's just something you'll have to find out for yourselves. Just the way that I did. No problem. We'll start by proving ourselves in the games. There ain't gonna be any games for a while. Gotta clean up the mess from that last battle first. Okay, we'll be back. I still can't believe that Squirt actually beat Cerberus. Just between us, I'd already worn Cerberus down by the time the little guy jumped in. My lips are sealed. I'll just bet you did. By the way, we get the hero license, which allows us to fight in some battles or in the games later on, but they're not open right now. Anyway, Hercules, I am, I really saw you take down Cerberus. I saw you weaken him, you know, running away, so I'm not buying that one bid. But what is Cloud doing over here? Hey, are you alright? Yeah. So, why did you go along with him anyway? I'm looking for someone. Hades promised to help. I tried to exploit the power of darkness, but it backfired. I fell into darkness, and I couldn't find the light. You'll find it. I'm searching too. For your light? Don't lose sight of it. How about a rematch sometime? Fair and square, no dark powers involved. I think I'll pass. We learned Sonic Blade, but I could have gone without that hair flip by Cloud. That was just a little, a little bit image, you know, reducing, tearing up right there. I can't believe you just did that. But who in the world? Why is it getting dark here? He's strong. He's kind, he's always there for you, and he's handsome to boot. He's perfect. Perfect. Perfectly infuriating. He's crazy. He's crazy. <sighs> Wait a minute, be worried about it. All the pieces are in place, relax. Whoa, 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 here's what you do. Let Hercules drain the kid. In the next games, I'll take care of them both. Who invited you to the party? Stay out of this. This is my show. As you wish. Fight to your heart's content. So apparently Maleficent and 
you know, Hades are in some sort of weird, dark place where they feel like they need to take down Sora and Cloud. And by the way, speaking of Cloud, when he said basically I'm looking for someone or, I'm, or whatever he said, he doesn't actually find that person until Kingdom Hearts 2. And I didn't think that was like any sort of a, an important plot point at all. But the culmination of Cloud's story in Kingdom Hearts 2 is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up real quick because I'm sure I've shown this particular path before. Alright guys, here we are back at Traverse Town, but you know what? I am tired of that normal gummy ship. I'm gonna go ahead and make something in the gummy garage. And let me just show you the gummy garage really quick. First of all, uh, yeah, I was about to say, I think they're gonna ask me if I want to view the tutorial. No way. But you can go into the garage, and the green ones are the... The blueprints that we've gotten from killing other enemy ships. As you can see, the Kingdom, which actually we got earlier. The Shiva, Sylph, and Ariman. I'm not sure if we... I'm not... I don't remember getting that one, but apparently I did. The High Wind, though, is one that we can actually edit. To me, I really like this part of the game, but I can see why maybe you wouldn't like it. But I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm not gonna go, you know, way into detail on this or anything, because it's really a small part of the game, but I do want to make something, you know, a little different. So let me just go ahead and make something real quick. Ta-da! Oh my, I did not expect it to come out looking like this piece of crap. But, you know, in this game, it's really not about how the gummy ship looks. It's really about more, you know, the functionality of the ship. And I'm not gonna rely, I forgot how to change the colors of the actual pieces. I thought you just hit square, but apparently that's not how it works. See, like, look, it says... Oh, wait a minute, if I go back into the... How do I even get out of this? That's one thing. The controls on the gummy ship editor, to me, are a tiny bit confusing. But it says right there, square, paint job. Do you not get that until later in the game or something like that? Because I could have sworn you just hit square on a... You know, a piece, like you just select a piece and you hit square and you can edit the color, but apparently not. But this is what we're going to be going with now on. I think it could have gone without that lower layer of, you know, like the top. I don't even know what to call it. Like that lower layer under the top. I, I guess that's just the best way to say it. Apparently start is how you get out of that. And we are going to be saving it and I'm going to call it. Well, apparently, I thought I was going to get to rename it, but apparently not. I think you can somehow, but I don't remember how. Anyway, I am kind of embarrassed at how awesome that, you know, gummy ship came out. Isn't that right? But now that we've done that, we actually have something with two cannons on it instead of just one. Oh my, that looks horrible. <laughs> but since we've done that, we can actually come back to... Actually, we didn't have to do that to do this. We can come back to Traverse Town, and I feel a little bit more at home on my two legs instead of in the gummy ship editor. But if we come over here into the third district, we can actually light something, you know, fix the electricity or the circuitry on something that we couldn't do before because we didn't have the thunder ability. For whatever reason, this thing right here is, you know, out of commission. So if we go ahead and use thunder on it, you can hear a little tone that knows, you know, lets us know that we've done it right. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this back up until I get to the gizmo shop, and I'm probably going to speed up the fighting in there as well because I don't know if you can do what I need to do if there are enemies in there, so I'll see you guys in a second. I think that might finally do it for all the Heartless in here, and by the way, the reason I had to cut that out or speed it up or whatever I decide to do in editing is because I actually have to, you know, defeat them to do something in here. But I could have actually done this before, you actually have to step on these switches that are up here. I'm not really sure how they expected you to know, like, when you... The, first, the thing is, like, I'm not sure if there is a... I forgot to look out there. I'm not sure if there's a, a distinctive thing about that thing that we had to use Thunder on that shows that you're supposed to come back to the gizmo shop. But what that did, by the way, I'm not sure if you guys noticed, is it made these little 
they're not really elevators, but that's what I'm gonna call them. They made these things that I'm standing on right now, uh, you know, go up so you can actually get on top of the thing up here. And the reason that is important is because that is the only way you're supposed to, or you can get these switches up here, I believe. I'm not sure what happens if you get the, the high jump later in the game. I'm not sure if you can jump up there, and even if you could, I'm not sure if you could put down the switches if you didn't turn on the power. But that makes this clock go right here. And it'll stop at some time, I don't remember what the time is. The clock is stuck at 6.54, we obtained two postcards. Let me go redeem those real quick. And here we are back in the mailbox. Man, Yuffie, what are you doing? Why are you still here? Let's go ahead and redeem our 7th postcard, which gives us a Mega Elixir. And our 8th postcard, which gives us an Orichal Orichal Comb. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that. But that is actually a pretty important synthesis item that we'll be using later on in the game. Now, I think we could have actually... Now, nah, I'll just do it later. I was going to say we could have gone back to the 101 Dalmatians house, I think, to get something at this point. But I'm not really interested right now. Now, let's go ahead and let me think of what I need to do here. I think I can actually go back to Wonderland to get something that yeah like I can shock those plants right now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the trip here because I've shown this before but when I go from Wonderland to whatever this world is I'll actually show you guys the trip there all right guys here we are at Wonderland let's go ahead and you know pick everything up in the Queen's Castle because what we need to do is actually go into the Lotus Forest right off the bat so there's not really any point in going through the you know, the rabbit hole to get there. The first thing we need to get is actually right inside of the Lois, Lotus, Lois Forest, which is this family guy, but right inside of the forest here on the left, I believe. And if you guys remember, I think I showed this when we did Wonderland. I said something like, you know, these flowers right here, if you investigate them or whatever, say something like, shock me. And if you do, you can actually get, you know, a treasure chest up here. But, you know, we got a whole bunch of Heartless here to deal with. So let's see, is that going to be it? Is that finally all the Heartless? Like, that is, like I said, I think last time I was in Wonderland. That is one of the only complaints I have about this game, is that if you just want to open a simple treasure chest, you have to kill everything, you know, anywhere, like, on the screen. But all we got out of that was a Shell G, which I think is, you know, it obviously is a gummy ship piece. I don't even remember it being that good, so I'm not sure why we needed that exactly. But I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up till we get to our next destination, because I'm not sure exactly how many Heartless are gonna be on the way there. Examine it, or yes, good. I thought it was gonna be more heartless that spawned in there. Hopefully, I have enough magic ability. If I don't, oh my goodness! And I don't even have—I don't know if I have any ethers in here either. It looks like. Am I really? I'm not gonna use a mega elixir just to get this gummy ship piece out of this plant right here. Oh, did I put one on Donald by chance? Please let me have one on Donald. Okay, fine. I guess I don't have any ethers. Maybe I can go back to a save spot or something and have. All I need to do is get just a tiny bit more magic to use Thunder on this thing and get another gummy shit piece. Maybe I'll just come back to that later. But I think what I'm gonna do now, you know what, I'm just gonna go replenish my MP and then I'll be right back to get that because I can't leave that here because I'm gonna forget about it. Alright, and I'm back with just enough magic to use Thunder, what, one time I think? Good. I watch it be something completely useless. Thundara G, I believe that is actually a an offensive weapon for the gummy ship, so I'll actually probably put that on there as soon as I get back to the gummy ship screen. So I'll meet you guys there because we actually have one more thing that I want to do before this episode ends, and I think it's already pretty long. Alright, here we are back here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put that Thundara G. Hopefully I can get it on there. It looks like my my ship is already kind of big. I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna put it. Regardless of where I put it, it's probably gonna be like off-center as well, so I guess it doesn't really matter. You know, what in the- did I just do something? I hope not, you know, at this point I don't even care about the gummy ship, it just looks so ridiculous, I can't believe I'm flying this thing. Is this gonna fit right here? I don't even think- I think it's too big. How about I just do this? There we go, isn't that just great? This is the SS Full Grown, we're about to fly this- you know, fly this thing to the next world. So, you know what? Might as well save it. I know it's completely ridiculous looking, but I guess it's just gonna have to do. 
Now let me go ahead and show you this bad boy in action. You guys are going to be astounded at the power with which this thing flies. Look how fast we're going. Isn't this just fun? Like, but at least it has a whole lot of, look at this, it has so much firepower, it's more like a tank than anything. Hopefully, yeah, there's some minis, let me just show you. See, it takes down kids really fast. So it's not, you're probably not going to die if you go with something like this. I'm not sure if I explained this before, but if you have, like, the body pieces, you know, the parts on the bottom, let me tip the ship forward so you can see the bottom. Those pieces on the bottom down there, they slow the ship down, I think, and but they also give you higher, you know, shields and defense and stuff like that. So I, while I don't like the fact that I'm flying so slowly, at least I don't have to worry about the gummy ship ever. I don't know if I've ever failed the gummy ship sequence though, so I'm not sure if it's even that valid to say that, oh, my ship is so strong that I'm not ever going to crash the ship. But regardless, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up because there is, like I said, one more thing I need to do. And there, we finally made it to what in the world is that? That actually looks pretty cool. There's a waterfall falling off the edge of the world. I'm not sure if that's how physics work, but... I wish I had a goofy voice, guys. I really do. But, hey, Donald, maybe King Mickey's down there. In a backwater place like that? No way! I love how the text takes, like, five hours to, you know, show up. Hold on, Riku and Kairi might be down there. Let's just check it out. Forget it, we're on an important mission. Just land. No. If he says yes, I'm gonna laugh. Come on! Ah, oh, phooey. Man, I, this, see, this is the moments when I really wish I had Donald and Goofy voices, because I think that would be kind of funny. But the thing is, apparently Sora and Donald are fighting over the controls, and we're going to crash land in that forest down there. When I was playing in the game for the first time, I was really like, man, Donald and Goofy, or Donald and Sora don't like each other, do they? But playing through the game up to this point now, at my age, I thought they were actually kind of good friends, Whoa. and then something like this goes and happens. Oh, my head. Donald? Goofy? <gasps> All right, so we're fighting Saber here, I believe. Is this, you know, Jaguar, Lion? I think it might be a Jaguar. I'm not, you know, a big, you know, cat connoisseur. I'm not sure exactly. But anyway, yeah, I'm not sure why Donald and Goof, or Donald and Sora, are so, you know, at each other's throats all of a sudden. I thought they were friends, but apparently not. Now, this fight right here, as you can tell, is actually very, very easy. All this enemy does here is just jump at you and swipe. If you can dodge that with the dodge rolls, you'll be just fine. We do actually have to end up fighting this later. I hope that's not a huge spoiler or anything. But yeah, as soon as I defeat this thing, like so, that was a lot of experience just for that little thing. But I believe we're going to be getting another cutscene. Sabor. Danger. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, what is this place? This place, this place. Okay. Where did the others go? Look, I got separated from my friends. Have you seen them? Mm hmm? Friends. Friends. Right! My friends! There's two of them. The loud one is Donna. Uh huh? You know what? Never mind. I'm looking for my friends Riku and Kairi. Look for Riku. Friends. Right. Kairi. Friends. Uh, right. 
Um... Oh, friend, here. Really? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Friends, here. Not sure I understand, but show me. Take me to Riku and Kairi. Tarzan. Tarzan, go. And I'm Sora. Tarzan, go. Sora, go, go. I sure hope Sora's okay. Ah! Who needs them? Big and friend, you can without them, huh? Ah! Oh. Alright, so now we actually have the ability of putting Tarzan in our party, which, when I played this game for the first time, I was like, Oh my goodness. Tarzan in my RPG party, so that's kind of cool. The thing is, I know Donald and Sora are not really happy with each other right now, but I hope nothing happens to them, you know? I mean, they just got cornered by Clayton, who I believe had a shotgun. I didn't get a really good look at the weapon he was holding, but anyway, guys... In the next episode, hopefully we can take uh, you know take on the dangers here of the deep forest or deep jungle. I forgot what they called it already. But I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Kingdom Hearts. I know there was like a lot of speeding up and stuff, but there was a lot of stuff I needed to have done, you know, before this episode started. I actually, I don't know. I didn't have to have it done, but I do like to finish up all the loose ends before I start new worlds. But anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching this episode, and I want to see you guys back for the next episode.